Okay, I think that we are ready to go. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone. I am trusting that we are off to a splendid convention. I know that I was energized here in Carlton's well message, yeah, as well as listening to the talk with President Riccobono. And I think I have the energy that I will need to make it through the next 45 minutes. So welcome. Um, we're going to go through and talk about Rail 101 is what I call it. This is a quick and dirty um, introduction to Braille. Um, I will have a couple spots throughout the presentation where I will stop and do a check-in to see if anyone have any questions. So until then, if you could keep your mics muted and write down your questions, Scribble them down, braille them down, slate them down, record them down so you don't lose them because I have to do that. And when we have a check-in, um, you can ask a question. Okay? Um, this, I'm going to give a little precursor or a little, this is my disclaimer statement. This presentation, it's, the title is all about that braille. It's introduction to reading the Braille code. and Well, not reading, but understanding the Braille code. This presentation is intended for individuals, for parents who are sighted, for them to become comfortable with understanding and further developing their skills in deciphering the Braille code. So this the way that this presentation is organized, it is from a visual perspective. I have created a slide presentation that will be uploaded onto our website that has all text description for the slide. So if someone needs to, be, to follow the slide or go through the slide who is blind, they will be able to do it. Uh, when working with individuals who are blind, this is not the method that I would use to introduce the concept of Braille to them. I would do so from a tactual perspective and not a visual perspective. So that's my disclaimer. Okay? I am going to go ahead now and share my screen. Make sure that I have audio.
Sorry, give me 10 seconds. Here we go. It's all about that room. Okay, today we'll be discussing the patterns of the Unified English Braille, commonly referred to as UEB. We have three goals. First, we will look at the letter formation that's used to form letters. Second, we will look at the dots and the formation for writing numbers. And these are literary numbers. And third, we will identify three basic punctuation signs that's used when writing. So, first we're gonna talk about the Braille cell. The Braille cell is comprised of two columns of containing three dots. So there are three dots on the left and three dots on the right. Some of you I know have participated in some of my braille lessons and one of the fun things that I like to do is use uh, body movement to help with reinforcing understanding the braille cell. So you know the hokey pokey, maybe we'll get to do it at the end. So how I teach using the body is think of the hokey pokey, put your dot one in, dot two in, dot three in, to the tune of the hokey pokey. And we use our body. So the left side represents the left side of the braille cell, and our right side represents the right side of the braille cell. So our left hand going up would be our dot one, our hip would be dot two, our left foot would be dot three, our right hand would be dot four, our right hip, swing it out, would be dot five and our right foot would be dot six, okay? So keep in mind that the cell contains six dots, three dot tie, two dots wide. Each dot in the braille cell has its own specific number and they go in sequence starting at the top left being dot one, Mid left dot two, bottom left dot three, top right dot four, middle right dot five, bottom right dot six. Okay, so the next three slides I'm going to ask some questions and you can unmute yourself to answer the question. There you go. Can someone name what dot is shown on the screen? It is the dot in the top left hand corner that has been highlighted. What dot would that be? Can anyone hear me?
Okay, so this dot is the dot one. Okay. Next slide, I have two dots highlighted, the middle left and the middle right. I've put in that the middle left is a dot two, and the middle right would be a dot Okay, correct. The dot five. Okay, last practice. Woohoo! All right, can anyone name the dots that are highlighted? I have the top left, bottom left, and bottom right. What would the corresponding na uh, names be? Correct. Dot one would be the top left dot three would be the bottom left dot six would be the bottom right when all of the cells are filled in in a in a braille cell when all dots are filled in in a braille cell this is referred to as a full cell so it's all filled up okay so here we have an example of a full cell. All six dots are filled in, and we would refer to this as a full cell. All right, letters. Now, I remember the first time I told a parent that I can teach them to decipher the Braille code in 30 minutes. And I, they dared me, and we actually made a bet. And I promise you that parent lost that bet. The Braille Code was written by Louis Braille, a French teenager. And the dots are not just randomly thrown out there. There is an actual pattern. There is a rhyme and reasoning for the formation of the dots. Okay, there are 64 possible combination of dots formation in, that is utilized in the Braille Code. The dots are organized in a systematic manner. There are 10 braille cells on a line, and then each line follows a specific rule. So this is what we mean when we say that we're gonna teach you the pattern in the cipher in the braille code. So remember that I said that there are 10 cells on each line, and the pattern, each line, there is a rule that corresponds with that line. So on the screen, I have three lines highlighted of Braille cells. All of them contain the dot formations for the first 10 letters of the alphabet. And I think all of us know our ABC. So we know that the first 10 letters of the alphabet are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. Okay? And I have copied that same pattern. I've placed it in line two and in line three. Now, when we talk about understanding the pattern, we first the first thing that we have to do is memorize the dots that are used in forming the letters A through J. And in preparing for this, I learned something new. So I'm gonna test it out on you guys and see if it works. So there is a video, a, a video series on YouTube that is entitled, Learn the Braille in One Lesson. And the presenter, taught the um, shapes of the letters in what we call the base 
line, which is line 1A through J. And so he says that if you can remember this story, the images that are used kind of overlap to visualize or mimic the shape of the braille cell that go correspond with it. So we're going to test it out and see if you guys can do it. Okay? So here's the story. You decide to go to the lake. You A, approach the bridge. I'm sorry, A was approach, B, a bridge. Pay attention to the shape that is being shown. You realize that it is closed. There's a closed sign going across the screen. You take a detour. This is an arrow that starts at the bottom and then goes, goes up and make a left. You realize you are on empty. You fill up with some fuel. Now you are in a gridlock. You trade your car in for a Harley. Turn the ignition on. And jump over the river. So let's see. Now I put the images over the Simbrail cell to show how they line up to kind of give you that visual. Um, this is useful because a lot of times, especially when you are looking at the Braille cells, we have braille cells that we call mirror images and it sometimes can get you confused so i think these visuals are helpful in remembering which way the dots are going all right so it says a you approach b a bridge and you see the two the bridge lines up over the dot one and two for the b You cross, you, sorry, the bridge is closed. The closed sign goes across, that's one and four. There is a detour. The hour goes up and around, that's one, four, and five for the D. You realize you are on empty. The fuel needle goes from the top to the bottom, so it goes over dots one and five. You fill up with some fuel. The F, the print F goes over the dots forming the braille F. One, two, and four. There's a gridlock. So the four cars are lined up over dots one, two, four, and six. You trade in your Harley, and symbol is over the three dots that makes the H, one, two, and five. You turn your ignition on. The ignition switch goes up from dots two and four, and you jump over the river. Okay? Thumbs up if you think that that was useful. So again, we said that number, our first line is our baseline, so that's A through J. Our second line begins with the letter K, so we go back to the A again, and it ends with the letter T. 
let's see what happened between K through P. On line two, which is K through T, we added that three. So if you notice, the K lines up under the A, and it's an A with a dot three. Okay, the L lines up with the B. It's a B with a dot three. And if you go all the way across, the T lines up with the J. And a T is a J with a dot three. So line one is our base. We use the top four. Line two is K through T we add a dot three. On the third line, again, we utilize our base, and now we are adding on for our last part of our alphabet, we add a dot three six. Okay? Now pay attention. We have more than from T through Z, that would be six letters, but we have more cells on the line. These are what we would call contraction. And that's for another lesson. But I wanted you to see that the way the code is written, once we end with the lead letters, we go straight into contraction. So on line three, we have U, V, X, Y, Z. There it is. I've removed the contraction. So again, on line three, we have U, V, X, Y, Z. Well, what happened to the W? The W actually occurs on the fourth line. And the reason for that is, remember I said Louis Braille was a French youth. And in classic French, the W is not part of that alphabet system. So the W was added later on line four. So here the W occurs at the last position of line four, which is the letter J. And the rule for line four is we add a, a dot six. So line two, we added a dot three. Line three, we added three six. And line four, we add simply a six. So looking at the alphabet using the line up or the line system, we kind of just plop the W right after the Z. Okay, so here it is. I kind of put it right here behind our Z. So you know that it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't occur in that line, but the W is one of our alphabets. Okay, any questions at this point? So here we're going to get some practice. Can you read this? I have three cells on the screen, three braille cells. The first braille cell is a dot one three. Second is a dot one. And the third is a dot two, three, four, five. And I'm giving you guys a little cheat sheet or a little reference sheet. So we know that the first two letters occur on the first line because there's no cell, no dots filled in in the bottom part of either of those cells. Okay? So the first one, dot one, three, looks like my cross or my closed sign. So that's a C. The second one is one dot, so that I know that that's an A. 
The third symbol has a dot three. So I know if it has a dot three, it has to be on our second line. Okay, and the base of it is a J. So that's my T. So the word is cat. Okay, another practice. Here we have four symbols. The first two occurs on the baseline or the first line. The second two occurs on our second line because it has a dot three. And the last symbol has a dot three six, so I know that that's on my third line. Okay. See if you can test it out to see if you can figure it out. Right? This is self check. Right, so the word was jelly. All right, moving on to numbers. So, our numbers follow the same pattern. Numbers are comprised, our literary numbers are comprised of our baseline, the same symbols that are used to make the letters A through J are used to make numbers. There are a few symbols in Braille that we say are non-print um, symbols because there isn't a corresponding print symbol that goes along with it or equals it. And one of the first symbol of such is our number sign. If you look over to the left here in black, I have placed the number sign in front of line one or our base. The number symbol comprised of, is made up of dots. I'll give you a second to think about it. Three, four, five, and six. When you place the number symbol or the number sign in front of any of the symbols that are found in our baseline, it is automatically read as a number. And we turn the number sign off by making a space or if we put a number indicator. So, Right here, I have the number sign in front of line one. And if I didn't have any space between these numbers, if I did not have any space between these numbers, I, this number would be read 1,234,500,000. Thousand eight hundred ninety. Okay. So going across with the numbers that I just uh, spouted off, a number sign in front of the dot one would represent a one. A number sign in front of one two would be a two. A number sign in front of one four would be a three, and all the way over to a number sign in front of dot two, four, five would be a zero. Okay. Give you a second to mull that over. So remember, the number sign, it does not have a print correspondent. I kind of used the, the hatchet sign or the, the uh, what do you call it? That's not the ad side. Um, um, but that's not the sign that, that's not the way how you would represent that in Braille. But just to kind of make you have a reference to know that that's the number sign. Okay? So can you name this number? I'm going to give you a hint. I said this number 
at the beginning of the presentation. Okay, so we have the number sign and that's two, one, two, four, and then one, four, five. This is a perfect example of mirror images. If you were to take those two and place them in front of each other, they would be mirror images. So this is 64. The number 64. So there's 64 Grail symbols. Now we gotta punctuate it. So the capital sign is another example of a non corresponding, uh, does not have a, a corresponding print symbol. Usually when we write in print, we have a capital A and a lowercase a. In Braille, an A is an A. The way that we can identify a letter as being a capital letter is placing a capital sign, which would be a dot six in front of the letter. Uh, if you put a dot six in front of the word, for example, your name, that will tell the reader that only the first letter is capitalized. There is corresponding ways to capitalize an entire word as well as multiple words. But the basic capital sign to capitalize one letter is a dot six. All right, so our three basic punctuation signs, getting ready to read some sentences. So we need, we start a sentence off with a capital letter, so we have to end it with a punctuation mark. We have to accentuate it. Our punctuation occurs on line five. Remember I said that all of our lines are made up of our base, A through J, and each line has a specific rule. The reviewing. Line two, K through T, we add a dot three. Line three, we add a three six. Line four, we add a dot six. Line five, we bumped it down. So if you look at our base, which is A through J, the A is in dot one. On line five, it's been bumped down or dropped to the lower cell. So the that dot now is in dot two. I took out the other symbols that are found on line two because I didn't want to confuse you too much. But our three basic punctuation mark occurs on this line. Again, these shapes can be used to represent a variety of things. But when they occur at the end of a sentence without a space, they represent a punctuation mark. Okay? So, I, a trick that I, tell, I teach my kids to kind of remember what, um, what dots are used to represent the punctuation mark. First one is a period. And the period is a drop D or dot two, five, six. And so I say, when you get to the end of the sentence, you're done. So D, we drop it down. What do we need? We need a period. So D for done. When you're done, most sentences end with a period. The next punctuation mark is an exclamation mark. And the way how I remind my students and myself of it is, it looks like the shape of an F. 
So if I say fine, that's with excitement or fun. So a, a sentence that is filled with excitement or fun, or we say fine, we would be an exclamation mark. So F for fine and fun for our exclamation mark. Our question mark occurs under our H. So again, the way that I remember it is when we start a quest, when we start a sentence off with how, we know that that's going to be a question. So how or H, drop H is our question mark. All right. We're getting up to our third minute mark here. So here's some practice. Now I've given you the advance. Here, sim braille are not separated into, or we don't have shadow dots or placeholders. And I did this for a reason because I want you to see that no matter what, you your braille cells will always be two dots wide, three dots high. So if you have an empty space in your cell because you didn't use all of your dots, you have to move over. You still have an empty space holder. And you move over to the next cell to do your first letter. So how about with the first one? So this dot right here, in the, the first dot by itself is a dot six. So that's our capital. Okay. The next cell is a dot one and two. So that's a B. Then we have dot one five with a dot three or one three five. That's an O. And the last letter in that word looks like the first, so that's a B. Give you a minute to see if you can test your wit. And here is our end punctuation mark in the shape of our D. So that's the period. So our first sentence is Bob ate a cake. Oof. I think I've been doing a lot of cake eating during COVID. All right. Our second sentence, you can look and you see that there is a kind of like a gap between that. So that tells that there should be three words in that sentence. Give you a minute to see if you can decipher any of those. Did mom help? So this is an example of a question. And our last sentence See if you can figure out our first word in the last sentence contains only one letter. So there are four words in that sentence. I won 27 books. And of course, I'm excited about that because I love reading. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself at this time if you have any questions. No questions. Anyone out there? You did a great job, Jackie. It's Penny. I just wanted to make sure you knew if everyone could hear you. 
Okay. Thank you, I love Teddy. the whole buying thing. That was really interesting. I, I um, and if anyone wants to know, that Jackie's slides are on the website. Um, so um, if you want to go back and look at her wonderful things that she was explaining, they're all there. So. Penny, I'm going to send you an updated slide, um, an, an updated version. You do whatever you need to do, Jackie. <laughs> okay. It's the same basic concept, but I went back and pulled some other resources from another presentation that I had done, and I saw that I had some additional resources that I could add to it. Okay, any other questions? Comments, concern? So anyone in here, this is your first time or your first attempt in learning or deciphering the Braille code. Did you find this to be a little bit, I know it's fast paced, but was it, was it helpful? Do you understand it a little bit better? I have a question. Uh, what is it easier to use uh, the ones that ha are a specific word over uh, just letters? Um, repeat that question. I'm trying to, are you talking about the images that I use? Yes. Okay, so the images were used kind of as a visual tool to kind of help you see the shape of the letter. No, no, no. The, the specific, um, the, the cells that when you use all the dots, they stand for one a whole word rather than just a letter. Okay, so you're jumping ahead. So yes, in contracted Braille, um, each of the, most of the cells or most of our letters are used to represent a whole word. And there are various types of contractions. We have whole word contractions. We have whole letter contractions. And so you, it is easier. Contractions are used because you take up less space. So for example, our W, and I think I got back to W, um, here you see that the W, when it's used by itself, so it only, it occurs with a space in front of it, space behind it or a punctuation mark would stand for the word will. So W by itself would only take up one space. But if I was to write out the word will, it would take up four spaces. The contractions are used as a way of space saving or saving space. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. And Jackie, Ellen Clark in the chat box, I'm not sure if you're keeping track of that, said this is terrific. I never understood there was a systematic sequence. Thank you. I want to make sure you saw that. Thank you, because I, I um, when I come back into the slide, I keep moving away from my chat box. I'm running like four different pieces of equipment right now, so I can't get to my Braille display. Um, so yes. Yeah, it is. It, it is remarkable. Um, when I found out that, that it was an actual system, I'm like, oh my gosh, if someone had showed me this when I was just learning how to read Braille, I could have knocked this out like easy peasy. And once you learn a shape occurs, you and you learn, you know, what words or what group of symbols occur on that line then it will help you. And I teach my kids who are tactual readers, I teach them this same method, but I do it tactually. And the reason for that is it, it reduces the occurrence of reading reversal. So for example, our, on line three, after the Z, we have additional letters or five additional symbols and those symbols are and for of the and with I know that those occurred in order so I know and for of the with that's the sequence so of and with are mirror images of each other so if I know that of and with is on the same line of comes before with when I hit that symbol in braille it's a lot easier for me to decipher it out then I'm more or less likely to make a mistake and read it as a reversal. 
have time for one more question. So I have a question. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Lee Candy. I'm pretty new with Learning Braille. So I was just wondering when you said about the contractions, is there like a dictionary for the visually impaired to go to to get those contraction words? Yes. So there are um, quick cheat sheets. And again, when I'm working with students, I usually have them create their own little dictionary so that they, when they learn a new letter, they would write a word down showing that letter. And so it's more meaningful to them. Um, but there are several different um, publishers that publishes um, brand reference sheets. I know that NFB has one, and I know that National Braille Press also have one. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I have a question. And when, and when all else fails, you can go to on the web, which I did not put that on the resource list, um, the BANA webpage, which is the Braille Authority of North America, so it's B-A-N-A, and BANA has the rule book for any when in doubt, that's where you will check it out. Yeah, someone else had a question? Um, yes, I'm studying to be a Braille teacher. I want to work with children zero to five. And I was wondering, how can I, what, what advice would you give me for teaching that age group of kids? So early Braille readers, they refer to it as um, pre-Braille. The best methodology in teaching students to read Braille is first for them to have a love of reading. The same rules that you would use for teaching a sighted child um, to read. So first, they have to first develop a love of reading. So read to them. The second thing that is important for our tactual reader is that they learn to explore using their, their, their other senses. So they learn to explore different textures, they learn about coordinate direction, not court direction, but direction, up, down, left, right, um, top, bottom, because those are words or concepts that are used often in describing Braille. So those foundational concepts are important for them to learn. So tactual exploration and the, the concept words of top, bottom, left, right, um, middle, in, out, having them have exposure to that. I do a lot of sensory activities with my young kids. So being able to decipher different textures, sandpaper versus um, um, I give them Play-Doh. I don't use Play-Doh at my house. That's a band from my house. But at school, I give them Play-Doh because Play-Doh actually builds finger strength and finger strength is important in reading Braille. So let them play with Play-Doh. Yep. Yeah. Um, so reading, reading and exploration experience. Um, thank you guys thank for you, coming. So and let me see if my song is going to play. So at the end here, I have my resources. Let me see. Yep. What? Oh, what? It's not going to play. And there were some questions about where the. Um, where the recording when available will be posted it'll be on the nopdc website nopdc.org and jackie slides are also on there you go to nopdc find the nopdc conference choose workshops find jackie's workshop and you'll be able to find the page and we'll have all this up there i don't know how long it's going to take us to get this recording up because it may take a little while because we, we the process it will be to get first to get it but as soon as i get it I'll make sure it goes up there because I know there's a, lot, there was a lot of people in the room. 82 people, Jackie. Wow. So you guys have to go check it out now because I had a cool little song um, that I borrowed from the Bell Academy in Louisiana. It's called It's All About That Braille. It's the title of our workshop. So you got to go and check out the report so you can hear the song. Thank you, guys. Please let me know, uh, send us any messages, uh, if you have any questions or comments or you would like any more information. Thank you very much.
And everybody, enjoy the rest of your convention. I'm really sad. It didn't rain. Welcome, everyone. We're five minutes away from our next session because, again, fire hydrant. <laughs> Drinking from that fire hydrant, my friends. Hey, Carlton. Yes. Hi. It's Gail Wack. Hi, Gail. How are you doing? I'm good. I just wanted to say hello. Oh, I'm so glad this you did. A, yeah, this is such a really cool way to do it. It is. And oh. it's just, you know, it, better in person, but um, so many of us can attend that we wouldn't have been able to attend, so. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So, we, um, yeah. Um, well, we, we, you know, here in the NFB, we know that alternative does not mean different, does not mean work, it just means different. <laughs> it's different for sure. So we're yeah. going to celebrate the benefits of where we are. Oh, yeah. So uh, this is it. That was it. I'll let you go. Have a great, hey. we'll, we'll have a great rest of the day. We'll Thank you. You too. You're yeah, staying with us, aren't you?